It is so great to have you with us here on this Tuesday morning. Al Quartermont, along with Trish Lala. Last week, the Biden administration announced that it was canceling the last remaining lease sales for the Gulf of Mexico as part of the most recent five-year offshore drilling plan. Two of those leases in the Gulf, we also mentioned earlier, there was one in Alaska. And it just sort of kind of continues <clears throat> what we've raised as concerns, and all Americans right now are raising as concerns about kind of the state of the oil and gas industry as we see gas prices continue to skyrocket. Well, our next guest is the president of the Louisiana Oil and Gas Association, Mike Monclaw. He's a third-generation person in the oil well service business, and he joins us on the phone now. Good morning, Mike. Thank you for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me today. What was your reaction last week when you heard the canceling of those leases? It, it wasn't really a surprise. Uh, he's he's kind of been against our industry from the start. You know, he um, President Biden ran for office saying they were going to put an end to fossil fuels. I mean, that was one of his platforms. So from the beginning of, of his administration, you know, I think the first week while well, he was in office, he, you know, he ended the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, he's put regulations on, on banks giving uh, that, that give loans out to different um, industries. Well, you know, putting this ESG score on on different loans really, you know, uh, you know, it it, it just it, all companies can barely get loans now from from financial institutions because of those ESG scores. So it's that's difficult, you know. And then obviously these these cancellations of of, uh, of federal uh, leases. So yeah, he, he, it's just been a, a real negativity from the start with with this guy against oil and gas. But you know, expect it because that's that's what he ran on. Let's talk more about this these ESG scores because I don't, I don't know how many people in our audience are familiar with what that is. Can you explain that a little bit more? It's um, any kind of loans that are given out. Um, that there's a score on, I guess the the, the methane release, or, or you know, it's just a score that um, they they can't give loans out if they have a um, a methane release of an X amount of, of methane. And I and I'm not exactly sure of that score, but uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's out there, and a lot of the, a lot of companies are are you know having to try to reduce that ESG in order to get loans and. Uh, and, and look, it's, you know, the oil and gas industry has done a fantastic job of lowering emissions all over. I mean, in, in different specs, for, whether it be a, the, the emissions, uh, the emissions coming from a car or, um, or, you know, even from a plant. You know, they've, we have done more than any other country in the world at reducing our emissions. And, uh, it's, it's, it's tough when you have an industry that went through a seven year downturn like we did. And you're trying to come out of it, and you now you can't even hardly get a loan to, to you know, get your equipment back running, uh, or to to get wells drilling, mm. you know, to try to increase production for the nation. I mean, when you look at where we were, say by the last year of the Trump administration, compared to where we are now, in just really a probably not even a two year span. Is it stunning to see where we are now, or just like you said, you're you're not surprised based on what the president said coming into this? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm I'm, I'm not surprised. I mean, we had a we had a, a president um, before this one that was all about energy independence, and this this president certainly is not. You know, we're we're down about two million barrels a day uh, in the in uh, in the United States. We were at thirteen and a half, and I think we're. Right around 11 and a half uh, million barrels a day that we're producing here in the country now. Um, in our country, we consume about 20 million uh, barrels a day. So even un under President Trump, uh, you know, we were still importing uh, six and a half million barrels a day. But I mean, now we're now we're importing more than that, you know, so uh, I I'd love to see us get back to that 13 and a half million, maybe even 14, uh, stretch it as much as we can. Let's, let's get back to work in, in, the, in the country. And, and, and it'd be great if we could, uh, you know, get Mexico and Canada uh, and, and, and try to become uh, energy independent in our continent, you know, and, and where we don't need oil from countries that hate us, uh, you know, like 
Saudi Arabia and, and, and Russia and, and, uh, and those folks. Well, that's what kind of seems just head shaking, I think, to all of us is that, we, you know, he's he's doing this. And instead of us becoming independent, we are still relying on some of those countries out there and, and we're benefiting them instead of us. And, and, yeah, it just causes you to head shake a little bit. Right. There's no question. No question about it. No, I know a lot of this is being dealt with right now in some in the courts and especially here in Louisiana. You know, what do you see happening through some of that? Could that have a big effect on all this? Uh, what, what do you mean by courts? Uh, you're talking about the federal land, uh, federal leases getting canceled right. in courts? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that the the first one, 257, that was, uh, you know, 30-something uh, oil companies come in and, and quote, you know, or bid on, on properties in, in the Gulf, uh, just, a, just under $200 million dollars. In, uh, in leases, so these oil companies were, were planning uh, for the future, you know. And you know the, the the production that's coming out of the Gulf today wasn't purchased yesterday, you know. So these oil companies have long term plans, and it takes a long time to, um, you, you know, you, you you lease a property, then you have to go do geological studies. You got to go do three D, four D seismic. Get uh, you know information back. Do do your due diligence. A lot of times, um, the land that you purchase, there's no oil on it. So you know these oil companies. It's not something where you just snap your fingers. It's a long term process to get oil extracted. So the oil that's coming uh, to surface now, the production today is from five year plans two presidents ago. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. this is it's it, it's so. The, the the cancellation is not going to hurt the drilling um, today, but what happens is uh, oil is always depleting; it's always on a decline. So the Gulf is losing production every year, about fifteen percent per year that we lose. So with with that in mind, just think about in the next four, five, six, seven years, if there's no uh, more lease sales then the, the decline is going to rapidly increase and we're going to, we're going to, you know, be behind the eight ball. It's not, it's not a good place. Mm-hmm. We're talking with Mike Monclaw, the president of the Louisiana oil and gas association. So as we look at gas prices right now, nationally, the average is about $4 and 40 cents has gone up 16 cents just in the last week. If this course persists, like, like we are on under this president, where do you see gas prices eventually getting to? You know, I, I really don't have that crystal ball. I can tell you this. The, the hardworking people in the oil and gas industry are very proud to provide uh, affordable, abundant, and reliable energy, whether it's natural gas or whether it's gasoline for your car. And, you know, we, we don't like these high prices. And uh, they're too high right now. We, you know, we would, we would much prefer to have prices you know, down in the in the two dollar range, two fifty range, than have you know gasoline prices in the fours. So uh, it's not good for anybody. It's not good for the country, and it's not good for oil and gas. We don't make any money uh, when gasoline prices are high. That's you know that's not you know how how it works for us. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the price of gasoline is uh, from transport. There's profit for gas stations, uh, and and for the most part, it's taxes. You know, if, if you look at the price of, of, of gasoline, uh, I think today it was, uh, I mean, it's the last month it's been in the threes. But when you look around the country, you see people paying, you know, $5 for something, $6. Well, that is all uh, taxes. Mm. Anything above, you know, the, the commodity price is, is, uh, is a tax. You know, so, I mean, you look at a state like California where they have the highest, tax i think illinois is number two i mean those states you know i guess the states could you know put uh you know lower their their tax take to, to help the the uh the economy and help their uh their consumers uh and i guess the united states could do the same thing because you got federal taxes you got state tax you got county taxes sales tax so there's a lot of tax involved in that price of gasoline for sure we're talking again with mike monclaw from the louisiana oil and gas association We need to take a quick break. If you have a call that you'd like to call in and ask a question, feel free to do that. It's 442 
8255. We'll be back with more on Talkback right after this. And welcome back, everyone, here on Talkback. Al Quartamont, Trish Lala with you. And we're having an interesting conversation with the president of the Louisiana Oil and Gas Association, Mr. Mike Monclaw. And we've been talking about just kind of the way the Biden administration has impacted the oil and gas industry. Mike, I want to ask a little bit here in Louisiana, how has the Edwards administration impacted the oil and gas industry? Well, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, you know, he, he he's he's uh, he's been against us. He's been on the on the opposite side of us on several things. Uh, he does understand the importance of of oil and gas to our state, though, and he has gone to D.C. and, and fought for us uh, for our Gomesa dollars, the all, you know offshore uh, intake that we get from from um, the royalties for the federal royalties offshore, and you know those those payments that we get go directly to coastal projects. So that's, that's a, that's a positive. Uh, on the negative side, you know, he has been the, a, a proponent of the, um, the coastal lawsuits and, you know, my family business, we have workover rigs and, uh, you know, we had, uh, land rigs and we had barge rigs and the barge rigs over the last seven year downturn, when you throw in this coastal erosion lawsuit and companies getting, sued just for filing permits uh, to, to dredge, you know, it, it just totally demolished the barge market. And we ended up selling our barge rigs for pennies on the dollar. Mm. And uh, and the bad thing about that for our state is barges, you know, land rigs work on uh, individual properties. You know, if you if you got, you know, 100 acres somewhere and an oil company wants to lease your land, you get the royalties. Well, in inland waters, it's all state leases. And so all the royalties that the state used to collect from, you know, barge type work, inland waters production uh, is now gone. I mean, there used to be 30 rigs running steady, you know, in the inland waters of, of Louisiana. And today I think there's one. Wow. So so that that is yeah, that that market has been totally demolished. All of that in the name of coastal erosion. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. And how much of this, you know, whether it be the governor and we certainly know the president, has to do with, you know, kind of the the story of, of climate change or, or that sort of thing? Is that a lot of does that have a lot of impact with all of this? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, you know, John, John Bell is um, certainly right in line with with, you know, the parties, you know, the, their main their main message. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure that is. All right, again, we're talking with Mike Monclaw. Looks like we got a call coming in. Let's go ahead and take it. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Yes, good morning, sir. Uh, uh, our, our grocery prices are up because diesel is up. Uh, all the trucks run on diesel. So does the ships. And uh, our diesel is high because it ain't no telling how much of it's going to China. Okay. Uh, well, let's... Yeah. Mike, do you want to comment on that? Uh, you know, the, the, everything is supply and demand for sure. So he's, you know, he's got a point that, you know, when when you have a a world that uh, has a demand right now for for oil and gas products, they uh, well, that's, sir, that's when it goes up. You know, uh, before 1973, I don't think oil was uh, considered a, a what do you call it a worldwide commodity, if I'm not mistaken. I used to work for an oil company. J. Paul Getty. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I work for yes, Getty Oil Company. And Absolutely. you come at Pineville, they got a Chevron station. It's almost sometimes 30-something cents higher than Walmart. So people need to stay away from Chevron and Shell <laughs> if they can possibly get their gas from Walmart. All right. Or, or certain state or one of the independents. All right. Thank, thank you for the call, Concordia. We appreciate it. All right, let's take another call. Good morning. You're on Talkback. Uh, good morning. I believe I understood the gentleman to say that uh, there was uh, this terrific amount of uh, taxes and so on. Uh, that doesn't add up. It's the uh, – I can't hardly – it's hard for me to be uh, non uh, – to, to hold my – my uh, verbiage, but at any rate, it's the gang that can't shoot straight in D.C., headed by this bozo uh, Biden, 
it's not taxes. Taxes didn't go up by umpity ump by hundreds of percent or something like that in the last year and a half. It's the it's the it's the incompetence that's existing in D.C. We we need to be we were practically independent in energy, and uh, and since the current misadministration. Uh, we're totally upside down, and, and and that is not a factor of taxes. Anyway, I just thought I would put that in. I, I'm so damn disgusted, it's unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> Share your frustration for sure. Can you explain how taxes work on, say, like a gallon of gasoline? Is he not understanding that, or you know, can you yeah, speak to uh, that? He, he's. I mean, look, I I agree with what he's saying. Um, you know, the the thing about. Uh, so I have, I have an app on my phone, and, and you can get it. Um, but it, it, it shows the, the price of uh, oil, natural gas. It shows oil in um, West Texas Intermediate. Um, it, it shows oil like we get the light uh, sweet crude, Louisiana sweet. Um, and it also has the price of gasoline. And gasoline today is three ninety seven. And so anything you're paying over three ninety seven is in taxes, transports, and profits. And, and so, um, uh, and, and not, I'm not arguing with the guy because I agree with him. Uh, you know, tax, the price of, of gasoline is too high right now. Mm-hmm. But when you have, when you have an administration that is pushing their green policies, they're pushing against oil and gas all the time. Um, and, and you know, they, they want to go electric this, electric that. They want to get rid of fossil fuels altogether. Uh, the the price of oil goes up, and you you got to think to yourself, what is their end game? Do they want high gasoline prices to make the, the United States want electric? I mean, I, I I don't know, but you know what, what a lot of people don't understand is that electric vehicles, especially in South Louisiana, if you have an electric vehicle, it is being powered by natural gas. Right. Um, you know, Ben Ben Franklin does not send down a lightning bolt from heaven and hit your antenna and charge your car. It's not how it works. I mean, if you go to your house and you plug it in and your energy bill, your Clico bill, your whoever you're you you have for your power, uh, they're they're getting that power from natural gas. Oh, that's the thing. This so, is not just about your gas price at the pump. This is about right. okay. you know such yeah. a such a bigger picture than that. R- r- absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and, and look, the, the thing that a lot of the, the uh, America, the world doesn't understand is the byproduct side of oil and gas. Uh, we would live in a totally different world if there was not oil and natural gas byproducts. Mm-hmm. And, and no one is going to drill oil in 30 years to give you plastics, synthetics, medicines. I mean, 97% of pharmaceuticals are made up by petrochemicals. People don't understand that. All the rubber goods that you have, you know, you, you can't make a Tesla vehicle without oil and gas products. The entire console, the tires, the batteries that they have are, are all, uh, you know, have plastic coatings on everything. I mean, what, what takes that play, the place of those oil and gas products in 30 years if there's no drilling? Yeah, I was going to make that exact comment. Your Tesla is not going to run on anything if you don't have the tires to put on it. How are you going to drive it? That's right. So it's going to take all kind of energy for our world to continue. You know, the oil and gas industry is not against uh, solar or not against, you know, uh, wind. It's going to take it's going to take all all the above, you know, for our world to continue. Because what happens is uh, the, the population continues to grow. And right now we're at seven and a half billion people on this earth. And they're predicting by 2040 that there will be a 10 billion people on this earth. Well, if there's 10 billion people from seven and a half, that's a 25% jump. So we're going to need 25% more energy, basically, to, for, for the world. You know, so if, if you've got today, oil and gas represent 54% of all uh, energy intake or energy usage. Well, the, the IEA predicts that in 2040, it's going to be 45%. So we lose 9%. But losing 9%, when the population goes up 
we're going to need more oil and gas in the year 2040 than we're producing today. Wow. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty sobering when you think Yeah, very about sobering, it. that's for sure. Yeah, and, and as you said earlier, you wonder what the end game is, but it, it certainly doesn't seem to be with, with much thought. It just seems to be more out of fear or I don't know what it is, but... Mike, you guys have your hands full, and I know that you, you, you do your best representing the oil and gas industry, both in Baton Rouge and, and even in Washington, D.C. So we appreciate the time to be able to catch up with you a little bit, and maybe we can do this again sometime soon. Anytime. I enjoy being with you guys. All right. Thank you again, sir. That's Mike Monclaw, the president of the Louisiana Oil and Gas Association, our guest here on Talkback. No.